welcome everybody to a groundbreaking cure to slow scheduling. The marketing secrets that they don't want you to know. And if anybody asks who they is, it's actually Andy. And I'll tell you why. Andy and anyone else who sells marketing. No, actually, they're great resources. It's kind of just a funny joke. Totally utilize the services that you have available to you. Tim, Michael Solutions, um, you know, and, and, and Andy and Matt Phillips, of course, as well. Really great resources. And that's actually what this presentation is going to go over a little bit about. How to utilize the content that's available to you in our industry to your advantage. So with that, we're kind of going on. Give you a brief introduction about us and who we are. My name is Andy Sher. I spent the last three years advertising in the float industry, primarily with Float Seattle, is where I got my start. Two years ago, I started an advertising agency called Rise and Tide Advertising to bring some of our winning secrets to the rest of the industry. Um, in that three years, we've booked tens of thousands of floats online, generated hundreds of thousands of revenue, uh, and we've developed educational videos that have been used by hundreds of centers around the world. And next to me, this handsome devil is Mr. Jonathan Rowe. Yes. So tell me a little bit about that. Yeah, well, I was in Jonathan Rowe last night. <laughs> As many of you may remember. No, um, maybe you weren't yourselves either. Uh, I'm the owner of Float Light in Appleton, Wisconsin. I'm also a board member for the Flotation Tank Association. And as you can see, I am a scientist of booking and sales. And number three and four on that side. On a personal look, I was. Well, saying, I didn't book that many floats, I don't think. <laughs> Tens of thousands? Not quite. But you know, I only have one float. So. <laughs> All right. So we're going to start this presentation off with uh, some fundamentals of buyer psychology. We're going to get into some real nitty gritty stuff with advertising uh, by the end of this, but we're going to start real basic and raw and make sure we're all on the same page about the fundamentals. So the truth is, it doesn't matter what you're selling. You can be selling boats or goats or boats. <laughs> <laughs> Everyone buys things for the same reason, fundamentally. Yeah, but no, no. every purchase someone ever made was motivated by one or two reasons. Yes, exactly. So the same is true for all of you. Anything you've ever brought in your lives, fundamentally motivated by either a problem, a problem you're trying to solve, or a desire you're trying to satisfy. And we'll get into a little bit more of what that means. But the, uh, these, both of these are the first steps in a three-step process called, called Buyer's journey. The buyer's journey. You guys have heard this before, probably. Quick, quick show of hands. How many people out there uh, have heard of the principles of the buyer's journey? Um, yes, beautiful. Get on the folks, yeah. So wonderful. For those of you unfamiliar, we'll take you through a brief example. Uh, basically, it breaks down into three steps. Initially, someone is aware of a problem or a desire that they have. In the case of this uh, little guy, he skip breakfast, lunch time, he's getting hungry. So the problem is that he has uh, hunger. Step two of his buyer's journey becomes his awareness of a solution to his problem. So in this case, he becomes aware of you know, local torture joints that serve what he's in the mood for. Finally, step three of his journey is the actual purchase of a product that serves to satisfy his problem by delivering a solution. But let me ask a question. Yes. Uh, it's not always true that someone's going to be satisfied with your burger. They might object to it. Maybe it's too expensive. Not my burgers. Maybe not, <laughs> but then you solve one. But what if your burgers are known to be a little problematic? Well, we'll come back to that a little bit later. <laughs> At any rate, uh, the fundamentals of this is that by mapping out these three steps of the buyer's process, we can start to reverse engineer what it looks like when someone buys float sessions, which is what we have uh, tonight for us. And, and that's the whole point. But because you're able to, you wouldn't just be able to convince just anybody to hang out in your big salty bathtub. So you kind of have to develop a process, give them kind of a reason. Exactly. You know? yes. And there are some reasons we'll go over today. Yeah. So. so in the context of the float industry, the three steps of the buyer journey break down to for instance, someone might be dealing with stress and anxiety at the problem with you. The solution that they discover might be you know, some of the research done by Dr. Feinstein, the quote has been clinically proven to reduce anxiety. Finally, after that point, they realize that for the media solution, then they're ready to buy a product. They're actually start considering 
what centers are around them, whether they're integral pricing deals or membership options or tax dollars are available. Fundamentally, though, fundamentally, the key step to get people across is understanding that Florida is a solution to a certain problem. That's, that's the real uh, mechanism that we're going to be showing and demonstrating in the advertising strategy. Let's look at who your most likely customers are. Because not everyone's going to be floating for the same reason. Yeah, exactly. So we're going to we're going to need to identify why different people are drawn to floating. Yes. And once we know that, we can kind of reverse engineer what markets are available to us and who should we prioritize trying to reach with our advertising. And craft the message that specifically appeals to those specific folks. Exactly. So Let's take a look at the big four markets that the float industry has the potential to serve with. There are more, but these four represent the largest uh, amount of money spent every year in the industry. They are back pain, depression, anxiety, and joy. And in a moment, we're going to go through each one of these to uh, showcase exactly how big each of them are, how much money is already being spent in the U.S. Uh, and using local examples from the U.S. Um, but the, the goal here is that Ultimately, we're going to try to show you guys how to teach these people about how floating can solve their problem and shift some of the spending they're already doing on other modalities in the float industry. Sure. And Andy, before you click the button, how did you come upon these results? Ah, yes. So these four are not only the largest markets available to the float industry, but these are also the largest self-reported reasons why people float that we discovered after running customer survey, <laughs> customer research surveys to uh, hundreds of different people across the floats that are available. Yes. All right, so breaking down these four big market opportunities for the float industry, we're gonna start with the smallest one where we the biggest. Number one is chronic back pain. Uh, statistically, it affects 7% of adults in the US. And these are people that are dealing with chronic back pain, ongoing, it's not a one-time or done thing, this is a regular part of their life. That's approximately 16 million people in the US. Uh, according to uh, Georgetown University report the most common reported treatments for back pain are pain meds, physical therapy, and massage therapy. And every year, Americans spend to the tune of $86 billion trying to treat and mitigate their life with back pain. Right? A lot of money being spent. The second buyer persona is depressive disorders. And this is broken down into two different categories. There are minor depressive disorders, which are depressive episodes that will last a few weeks to a month, uh, and major depressive episodes, which can last months to years. Uh, the minor depressive episodes are much more common uh, and affect much more, many more people. The major depressive disorders uh, are much more intrusive and can be uh, much more crippling. But minor depressive disorders are, are very, very common. And they affect 8% of the population, 17 million people in total around the country. Uh, according to the National Institute of Mental Health, the most common treatments are meditation, counseling, and therapy. And there's $105 billion spent in the US every year on this. Anxiety is even bigger than depression. It's 18% of adults, uh, 40 million people across the US. I mean, one in five people are dealing with an anxiety disorder. And I think yesterday, Ken even demonstrated that since the pandemic, those numbers are up. They may even be closer to 30% right now. Um, again, most common treatments are medication, counseling, and therapy, and $116 billion is spent every year treating anxiety. This is also why the flow research collection is so important. Yeah, that big mindset that the is doing is so important. And finally, the largest market right now uh, is chronic joint pain. This would be things like uh, arthritis, osteoarthritis, uh, rheumatoid arthritis. Uh, in fact, 23% of adults in the US typically uh, becomes more common in the elderly. Uh, but there's still 54 million people living with this year round. Um, and the most common treatments are pain meds, physical therapy, and joint replacement surgery. And every year, $140 billion is spent. So, this is a big thing. Yes. Okay. This is huge. <laughs> now, this is the moment we've been waiting for. Drum roll. Bam! Look at that. $447 billion? Half a trillion dollars. <laughs> Wait, trillion, 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 billion? Half a trillion dollars. Half a trillion dollars. You got Spend it. Every year. That's a lot of that's a lot of billions. Yes. Just a half a trillion. And these, and these are the people that have not yet realized that floating can help. Exactly. Likely. All of these people, uh, they may have heard of floating from one channel or another, but the research that's come out recently that shows that floating is clinically proven to help us is so new. Statistically, most of them probably haven't heard of floating as a, a practical solution. 
in their search for a pain-free, stress-free life. So uh, let's learn. What I'd love to do real quick, uh, for a couple of volunteers in the audience, I'd like to actually show you guys what these markets look like right around your guys' centers. Because we can talk about national markets in the queue, but we actually have the technology right here to break down how many people are there that can be reached on social media platforms around your centers and reverse engineer statistically what kind of market you have around you based on the population. So do we have any I, Bradley, Bradley, Kaylin? Yeah. Okay, well, let's go. I, I said Bradley first. Yeah, we'll take Bradley. Where are you located, Bradley? Indianapolis. Indianapolis. Beautiful. Because uh, everything has out. So you probably will log it to uh, uh, tap in. Okay, yeah. So what we're going to do is we're going to pull up uh, Facebook's business manager and navigate into an ad set that allows us to target Indianapolis. And what we can do is, uh, Bradley, about how big of a service area do you guys advertise to work Brought customers in, like how many miles away from your center do you need to uh, attract people? It has no maybe one state. Most people are going to come from uh, however far it will go, uh, like 15 miles. You mean 15 mile radius? Yeah, we'll use that. So what we're going to do is we're going to, we're going to drop a pin right on your flow center. We're going to pull a radius up. We're going to let Facebook's ad manager to tell us how many users there are on the platform that we can reach. Yeah. And from that, we'll apply the statistics that we know uh, to determine how many thousands of people. Let's go 40 miles. 40 miles? Yeah. Well, sure, we can pull 40. Yeah. 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 Actually, I would just, I would honestly say 50. Yeah, just. Because see, when you're doing a when you're doing a targeted radius, 50 miles is usually the max, and it's usually what I set. So I was just let's do it. Um, that's if I can actually get the. Yeah, like, yeah, you want a manager to work? Well, you know what? I'm. It's going to be unconventional. We're going to just do it on the phone. Oh, okay. We are not having <laughs> success here, but I will show everybody what we're looking at. Yep. So while while Jonathan pulls that up, what we've got here is a spreadsheet that is uh, kind of keyed in to showcase. These are the, the different sized national markets that we just broke down for you. And what we've done is we've determined the average annual value per person in these markets based on the number of people in the market and how much they're spending in total every year across all of them. So for instance, back pain on average is spending about $5,300 a year per person to manage their back pain between pain meds, counseling, and therapy. Yeah. Is that per person with back pain or per person per capita? Per person with back pain. Okay. Yeah. Uh, similarly, people with depression are spending to the tune of $6,100 per year. Anxiety is $2,900 per year, and drug pain is $2,500 a year. So what we're going to be able to do is plug in the population, a targetable population around Indianapolis right here, and it'll spit out for us how many people we can reach. Okay. Technology's uh, fighting us. So in the short term, here's what we're going to do. We'll divide this up into a couple of different size cities as demos, dummies, right? Let's say, for instance, uh, Indianapolis is a pretty major metropolitan area, I would think, right? Talk about a 50 mile radius, you're easily going to have a million or more people in that, in that area to potentially reach. So let's plug a million people into here. Let's say there's a million people around Indianapolis. That means you've got 70,000 people statistically dealing with back pain. There's 2 million people in the Indianapolis metro area. Okay, let's go 2 million. Two and according, and according to Google. Okay, so in a, in a population of 2 million, you've likely got 140,000 people dealing with chronic back pain. You're spending $750 million a year to treat that back. 160,000 people with depression spending almost a billion dollars to treat the depression. 360,000 people with anxiety spending over a billion dollars. And just shy of half a million people with joint pain spending over a billion dollars. So in a population center of 200, no, 2 million people, it's not necessarily that you're going to have 1.1 million people to reach because there will be some overlapping issues that people are facing with this. But you have 1.1 million opportunities to connect the dots on the market for the institution. Yes. Yeah. Yes. We're going to give you access to all the sheets here. <laughs> That's so scientific. All right, all right, all right. So, man, and I'm so sorry that this ad thing isn't working. It's so annoying, but it's so important that I'm able to show you this stuff. So. Even though it's taking forever, I'm going to slowly just come back and forth to it. But if it comes down to it, oh, here we go. 
this part. So, okay, let me just give you guys an example, like what, what he was trying to say. What we're saying is on Facebook, when we're looking at a specific location, for instance, um, tell me what the location is. Yeah. Okay, gotcha. What's the what's zip code? Tell me zip code. 206201. Okay. 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 And where are you exactly? Yeah, so this is Facebook. It's Facebook, and I'll get you. I'll, we'll tell you what this is in a moment. Okay. Um, I'm just. We're just using this as a potential example. Um, so what I'm actually looking at right now, just to kind of give you an idea, just to go back to what Bradley was mentioning. Um, he said Indianapolis, and then what I'm going to do is, I think I'm going to drop a pin, just right dead set in Indianapolis, and draw a 50 mile radius around that. And what that will allow me to do is get a number of potential users that live in that specific region. Let me get rid of the zip code. And when you guys, when I zoom out here, you'll kind of see what I'm looking at. There's a 50 mile radius around Indianapolis going into some of those cities. And I would say that you have the potential to draw folks from that region. Would you agree, Brad? Yeah, sure. Yeah, I think you would. If you use Float at Home, you can like see your users, your customers by yep. like area. So that's, as you guys can see right here on the right, that's 2,100,000 people. So if we were to have gotten that number before, um, and you would have been able to update it into our his calculator, which we'll just so happen to just do that real quick. Essentially, this so that interface that we were just in is Facebook's business manager. So yeah, and I will happen. we'll talk a little bit about that in a moment. I don't want to confuse people, but we were just getting to a number. So there's the actual yeah. numbers. Yeah. There you go. So so let's four four billion dollars spent in Indianapolis every year solving these four changes. Now now this is not something that you guys need to do. You don't necessarily have to go into the ad platform, create an ad set, look to see how many people you have, and plug them in. You can if you want. But I would say no matter where you're located, just know that we're just showing you that there is potential here yeah. um, as an example of that. So the spend is already happening. It just becomes a question of can we educate them on how floating solves these problems instead of the solutions that are already built. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> so and Andy, just to summarize, we've covered why people buy floats and who our most likely customers are, and how you might and how it might look like to sell them. Now we need to kind of see what it looks like to reach them with Facebook and Instagram ads. Um, and we'll kind of, I think, just jump right on into it. Yeah. So show of hands, how many people here have experience running their own Facebook or Instagram ads at this point? All right. Okay. So you guys might be familiar with what this looks like if you did attend my online presentation about funnels. This is just a real quick overview just to kind of give you an idea. You ever come to the point where you think you they're, 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 they know what we're thinking. You had that moment. It's like that ad came up right after you talked about it. Well, it's really because you did interact with that product or you went to that website at some point, and that coincidence did just so happen to happen or did just so happen to occur. And that's what we are able to do with funnels. And they're some of the most advanced, most effective marketing out there. So at the top, just to make this simple, we have prospects. Think of prospects like people that might want to float. And who have the problems that you just identified. Exactly, and that's even more specific, which is a really great thing. Those are the people you want to target. The leads are the people that may have taken action or that take action on ads that you've already shown them in the top level, um, and you show them about floating. So if they take action, we can actually put those people who have taken action. So imagine taking action like well, one action that they're taking is just going to the website in the first place, right? That's one action. But here's a better action. They go to your website and they scroll down half the page. You can track that. They go to the website and they hit this button, the, the CTA button, that's like, book now. That's huge in gold terms. Like, that's, they're taking major action. So you want to set something in front of them that, that might entice them. And so what you're going to do is at the CTA level is you're asking people who took action to make a purchase. You know, that's like when they go to your website, the next ad that shows up and, and I'm not about discounting, but you could put something in front of them. That's like, Hey, if you book now, you can even put a little digital counter on uh, timer on it. That's like, you got, you've seen this before. 
you got five minutes to purchase or that price goes back to normal, you better buy now. Not in float centers, I wouldn't recommend doing that, but that's the kind of advertising you can do. So instead of doing that kind of bait style advertising, you could potentially put something in front of them that explains a little bit more, further educating them, but that wouldn't necessarily make sense to somebody that's seen the ad about floating the first time. So the first ad in the, in the funnel is something that entices them or just interests them, like somebody floating maybe is an interesting thing. The second one will be like, let's tell you what it does for you in, in more detail, but it doesn't necessarily have to have the imagery that entices them. And then the last step is, well, of course, we're getting conversions. Yeah. So a quick question, I'm sorry. Yeah. So what you're saying that you can, it's like a, an equation, like an algorithm that it will send that same, that person, that same person, this kind of ad, and then this kind of ad. It's not an algorithm, but it's, it's, but it's, it's, it's Yes, you can. You can almost think of this as the, But, but uh, there are some requirements though, to be able to get exactly what I'm talking about. That has to do with building audiences. So for instance, the way that to, to kind of visualize this is, is I just went into a website and now I've been picked up by that pixel. I go now into this audience of people that navigated to the website for that pixel. I set up another ad set and another creative, another ad of people that are in that specific grouping because we know within the last seven days or whatever that they went to that website because they were picked up by the pixel or whatever kind of tracking metric that we have. And then we serve them that next ad. And the reason it's called the funnel is because the idea is that it keeps getting closer and closer to the conversion event. You can almost think of this as a parallel to the three steps of the buyer's journey. Prospects are people who've got the problem. They turn into leads once you've adequately educated them about floating as a solution. And finally, they make purchases when you give them a call to action. Kaylin, did you have a question? Well, it wasn't a question, it was a statement. When we were doing um, all the helm stuff, I went to your website to see what, what your home looked like. Yep. And now, you got like, ads from hey, me. I'm getting <laughs> you. And then, you know, and, and so I get. a book, didn't you want a book? Right. So I get a lot of people that are from around the country that are like, John, you know, you're wasting money because you're sending, you're serving me ads in Texas. And I tell them like, don't worry. I'm okay with that. I'm okay with serving you ads. I, do, I don't do it because I want you to see it. I do it because it's too much work for me to care that my retargeted audience is not gonna serve you. I actually don't mind if it serves someone in Texas or Florida because they may be traveling to me and they may be looking for something to do in Appleton. Or they may know someone. And I know and I get people that travel to us all the time because they're coming to conventions or what have you. And this just so happened to catch their attention. So um, <laughs> that's actually a really great example. I think you, you've just helped a lot of people understand that. What and excuse this? me, it's a video. I mean, it's, it's a picture of a woman moving in a tank. It's really cool. Thank you. I mean, I don't think it's honestly some of the ad creatives I make aren't the most effective. The truth is, is that is that that's why rolling. That's why having Andy here and showing some of Kim's, Kim's and Matt's content is going to be crucial. So let's say that we create uh, a specific audience, and I can go through this with you guys, but I want to get through the creative part first. I'm targeting people, and these, Matt, these notes are from Matt Phillips. He's the expert on his own content, and that's why he's performing and getting results for you guys. But he's, his, some of his suggestions were pain targeting, uh, folks with fibromyalgia, arthritis, back and shoulder pain, and he really focuses a lot on YouTube, um, and, and, and he shows this video to folks, and he also says, you know, you could do detailed targeted, or you could do uh, uh, interest-based targeting, which I'll explain in a moment. He suggested uh, the detailed targeting expansion, but he also said, is anyone 35 plus, so 35 years old plus broad audience should result in great conversions. That sound about right? So this is the content that he actually, that he provides for folks. And Read about the pain relief they get from floating. You know, they're not crazy. Every day, dozens of people come to Balance Float who are seeking relief from arthritis, fibromyalgia, and chronic neck, back, and shoulder pain. They've tried everything over the years, but to no avail. 
Imagine how sick and tired they must be of dealing with the chronic pain that often affects their work, family, and social life. Good news, though. The second they lay in a zero-gravity environment and float effortlessly at over 1,000 pounds of Epsom salt, they know something is different. Their joints get serious relief. Their bones and entire body begin to decompress. And they completely stop producing the stress hormones that often trigger their pain. Not to mention, they can let their mind freely relax, knowing our float pods give them full control of the lights and music inside. If you know someone who has been struggling with pain, why not see what all the fuss is about? Click the button below to try your first pain relieving 60 minute float session for only $59 at So, you get the point. You're specifically, you're, you're finding a need of one of those big targeted segments and putting that right in front of them. Now, two things that you could consider here. If we're using detailed targeting or we're building audiences, we could play this video later down the funnel. But my thought is, is if we could target all four and create what we call a dynamic creative and let Facebook work it out. And that's another option too. Now I have another uh, video here by uh, uh, by uh, uh, Kim Hannon, and she we all know creates amazing animations. Super relaxing. Yeah, I'm gonna make sure that I don't interrupt the video, but she she creates an animated videos which are very very good in front of audiences. People really relate to that. It doesn't necessarily have to be one specific person or another. It's just sometimes easier for them. That's how I made the beginner's guide to floating. It's for my float center. It's not real imagery. It's all just like little, you know, animated people. And people, it kind of softens the message, message of floating, I think. It just makes people feel more comfortable with it. And does that sound all right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, okay. Yeah. So here's. We all know yeah. that floating is super relaxing. But do you know why? Let's take a look. Your body uses chemical substances, known as neurotransmitters, to send information from the nervous system to the brain, which in turn sends instructions throughout your body. Float therapy impacts three neurotransmitters specifically, dopamine, serotonin, and endorphin. Floating also has an effect on the hormone cortisol. Let's learn a little bit more about what each of these chemicals does and what they have to do with getting salty. Dopamine is the feel-good chemical. It's pleasurable and rewarding, and it often motivates us to repeat behavior in order to get another feel-good hit. Dopamine huh. is released. I like a feel-good hit. <laughs> Most of the body's serotonin is actually found so, in the GI tract. What I can say is that you, you, you must have done, you, you do all your own animations. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it must have taken a long time mm -hmm. to get the, to do the mouse on the little guys mm -hmm. out. Mm -hmm. So, um, you know, utilizing That's different, yeah, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> using, utilizing different forms of content like this really helps to kind of, um, to kind of get your message out to as many people, apply to as many people as possible, um, and you really should show on your thing too if you can find it. Mm -hmm. um, it's right here. And maybe you guys have seen. Uh, we got 0.3 seconds. Break. You can you narrate? Maybe? <laughs> <laughs> I'm just kidding. You memorize um, the script. If we can't show Andy's, it's fine. Um, but Andy's, but you guys may have seen some of Andy's content, okay? It's animated, it looks good. He's talking specifically about some of the needs that people want to address. Some of that many billions that people are willing to spend, like anxiety. Tell me another. Okay. Tell me another. Tell me another. Okay. Oh, 
He got all four. <laughs> <laughs> so imagine having all four, and maybe you want to put them all in an asset. Well, then your broad audience might relate to all those people. And so what we'll do now is I'll show you an example of what we can do to be able to target people. Now, I know this is a little bit ambiguous using Facebook Ad Manager, and I don't want to reload because it's going to take another 20 minutes. Mm -hmm. But the idea here is this. We're going to create a campaign with an objective. The top level objective should probably be traffic, okay? The traffic campaign can help you build audiences, um, and you can define what these people are, who these people are. So for instance, um, with the traffic, with an audience of folks that you're driving people to a specific website um, for views, it should probably be broad and create a, a, create a copy that's kind of just enticing people to go there, okay? So for instance, if you're running an ad for something like that, right? You, if you've got a piece of creative like Matt's, for instance, where he's talking about you know, the benefits of floating for product pain, the copy in the ad itself could call out back pain specifically. Or in Matt's case, you could also call out fibromyalgia or joint pain, which he addressed across the board. Mm -hmm. um, so the idea is that with the right piece of creative, you can provide that solutional awareness to people and have it be specific to them with the headlines and the, the actual copy in the ad itself. Correct. Um, and you know, I, I guess I'm just I'm gonna ask you guys because I could go through and explain this. What do you guys? I have a lot of knowledge, and it's easier for me if somebody's guiding me, telling me what you want to know. Um, there are some things that people brought up to me that I do that have been so successful. If I if I didn't do them, I feel like I was losing something. If I knew I could, one of the biggest things that I do that has been revolutionary for business more than anything else is exporting customer lists and importing them into the ad platform themselves. How many of you guys do this? I've tried, I don't know. I'm gonna help you. Is there a resource to learn how to do that one specific, like that, that example? Uh, well, that's my intention. Um, I think that this sort of setup as a workshop is going to be very difficult for me to do that because of the internet connection. But what I will do, and I, can, I will commit to this, we'll set up a virtual call on the collective, you'll all see that call. You can all attend and we'll go through exactly that. Um, but in other words, and with the helm, and I, and I know a lot of people can get a little bit worried about this because they're like, well, what if I use mind body or something else? I encourage y'all to not worry. Gotcha. I encourage y'all to not worry. All you're doing is, is exporting your customer list, okay? Once you get your customer list imported back into Facebook, you already have a gold mine of people that Facebook or Google or a number of other platforms are going to tell you, we've matched this many people. That's an audience in, initially that you can start serving. And that's the remarketing aspect of it. When you put an ad in your business in front of somebody that's already been to your business, imagine how much more effective it really is when they see that ad. Now I know, Kaylin, you said you're having issues. And you probably have you ever tried to use the conversion template that I that I put out there? No. Okay. So I have a couple different conversion templates here. These are available on the Helmbot Captains. If you guys aren't on Helmbot Captains and you work with a different software, please provide me a, a, a very small sample. It will be private of your audience list if you could, and I will build the calculator so that it can, so basically what this does is if I take an audience, so let's say I have a demo account here at the helm, so I'm not, uh, I'm not, you know, providing any private information. So we might see like Mickey Mouse or Abraham Lincoln or something on there. Um, but we can see all of our customers, right? Oh my God, Albert Einstein. This is a really successful flow center because Albert Einstein, <laughs> he actually came up with uh, the theory of relativity in the tank at this one. So anyway, um, what you're gonna do is, and you can do more advanced things, but export the customer list in a CSV file, for instance. Download and open. 
And the way that I do this is a little different. Um, and I can show you guys how to set it up too. But all I have to do is download the CSV, drop it in a file or a folder on my desktop, and Google takes care of the rest. There is some scripting involved, but then it will it'll basically take that file and then pop back out on my desktop the render or the, the parsed version for Facebook. But take the audience list and open it. I'm just gonna do a quick open and I'm gonna copy the material and drop it into that spreadsheet there. So I'll do probably a select all. I'm gonna find the conversion sheet. Oh, that's not the one. This is the one. We're gonna drop it right here. Paste. I'm not sure if customers sometimes this can take a while. That's why it's better to utilize like Google Drive to be able to do this. But then it automatically formats it on this sheet. You'll see in a moment exactly how Facebook wants it. Facebook wants you to separate the first and the last name, to have an email, to have a phone number specifically formatted and a value. And these, these headers is what we call them in CSV files, must be named this, which is why you can't just drop in what you have from the helm into Facebook. Now what you're gonna do, yeah, you have a question? Do you need consent or do you ask for consent uh, in, in my privacy policy contains that I do in fact take your data and use it for marketing purposes, but just like anyone else's privacy document, it is sort of buried in there. And I'm not like I'm not telling people outright if they ask me, do I use do you use my data for marketing? I absolutely tell them I do. Mm -hmm. And if they don't want me to, um, there's a lot of really it is important, but I do. So like, you know what I find a lot of people do is like, they'll have you sign, they'll sign something that says, it's a privacy statement, but it says that you're providing me a copy of it. You ever see that, but they never provide it to you? That's because they don't have to, but if they ask for it, you really should provide it. We actually made the mistake that we said that we were gonna provide it, but we didn't have it printed. And so people were like, uh, why are you telling me you're giving me this? So you really should have it printed and let them read it. Um, and it's easy for you to, to make sure that they're not included in this audience. And that's going to be, that's going to be a result of, of, of manipulating some of the filters at the top to be able to prevent you from just exporting all customer data. Yeah, no problem. And, and there are some settings in Facebook that can also eliminate those particular, uh, rows from being served ads. This is yeah. different though than selling data. You're not selling it. Right. You're so in this, in, in this is why whenever I present this type of stuff, I'm always like a little nervous. Like somebody's going to be like, oh my God, he's figured out how to spy on me. <laughs> well, yeah, that's really, I mean, yes. <laughs> in a way it is. It's a way of me giving my, giving, giving the customer list securely to Facebook. They match the information that you've already provided them. Remember anybody that has a Facebook account, you've provided them the information. So all Facebook is doing is taking the information you're giving them. We have to have a few data points in order to be able to do it. So we can't just give you, obviously, we can't give you just their first name. We need your first, last name. We definitely, we, it's helpful to have an email and a phone number. And what Facebook does is it takes at least two of those, but normally more than that, and it matches them to the database of people in the world that they hold. This is why Facebook is the king, right? of data because they have it. And then what what will actually happen is, and I'll show you here in a moment. They like, need value? Huh? They need value? They want to know so you want to know why value is important? There's so, so much to talk about. There's a concept known as lifetime value in the customer journey. The lifetime value, and you'll see this on Facebook, a lot of people don't understand what it means. And it's like, why do they keep asking for this? The lifetime value allows you to scale that list on a hierarchy of value. Like the people at the top of the lifetime value are the people that spent the most money, right? So when you include the value in there, you're able to you're able to tell Facebook like this person up here is more valuable than this person. Now the reason why that matters is because when you create another audience, we call the other audience a lookalike, and you probably heard the term. This is another valuable thing. If you create a lookalike audience of the audience that you've uploaded to Facebook, you're building 
an audience of people that aren't those people that then you can reserve ads to. And then you're going to watch your cost per conversion event or your return on ad spend is really one I love to talk about because that's important to me. It goes from $20, 15, 10. Now, low light, we're down to the summer, we went back to $5 per event per conversion. In the winter, we're down to $2 per conversion event. Which means for every $2, God is spending on Facebook ads because selling full price quote. Full price quote. Cost me $2 to acquire somebody to buy something, which is good, right? You probably all like, I can't believe it. This is insane. My ROI, my ROAS, and I've, I've shared it on Facebook, and I was very weary to do it because I don't want to come out looking like I'm bragging, but I'm doing it because it was my intention to tell you how to do it, to show you, and to make this possible. And it's so awesome with floating because it's such a unique thing. We have such great opportunity to display content that's unique in front of people. Instead of us opening up a cupcake shop and being like, I made it these cupcakes or or whatever kind of business. I mean, you can make it business is interesting, but we have one particularly interesting business and we can create content for people that entices them and we can get them caught into the system. And uh, so that's one thing that a lot of people find valuable is creating a, a, a custom audience for Facebook based on your current data. And when you upload the audience to the when you upload that specific audience to the ad manager, what you're able to do, and I'm, this is Float Lights ad uh, audience manager here, so I'll kind of explain a little bit of this. But here's how this kind of works. I always date everything, but looking at this, you're going to see a L, LTV. Now it says a date, but I promise you the last time I uploaded was like probably four or five days ago, because I upload this weekly. I always export, I've created a workflow. The reason why you want to do this weekly, and if you get in the habit of it, you'll see the results, is because we have what we call attribution settings, or attribution periods. We have a total of seven days where we can legitimately claim data that Facebook will, will show is something new. Now this mostly applies to conversion events, but Keeping this updated is, is going to also keep uh, what we call frequency down. How many times we're showing an ad to somebody more than once, right? Um, and that's another side that we'll talk about if I ever do this online. But I upload the lifetime value. I'll upload a list of people who have been to full like one time and still have the, uh, the single-use automatic discount, I call the second-time discount, on their account. Because what I'm able to do for them is tell them and remind them, hey, if you guys come back to Float Life, you'll get $20 off your flow or whatever we offer. And that kind of gives, gets them coming back in. Um, I'm able to create really advanced audiences too. Like people that went to Float Life and clicked book now, but didn't result in a purchase event because they backed out. And then we serve them an ad that's like, literally this is what it says. Hey, we noticed you were on line trying to book a flow, but you didn't get there. Let us help you book. And I have five different copies in that one ad set. You can add multiples and Facebook will pick which one is the most valuable, or at least it'll determine that over time. Uh, that's why Facebook has this thing called a learning phase. Um, but anyway, those types of audiences are, are, are kind of like the ones that we're uploading to this. We can turn them into what we call lookalikes, and that's what this is. Now, a lookalike is people that are just like the audience you just uploaded, but we can define a percentage of the population of that like audience. So we can pick between one to three, five to eight, or we can go from one to 10. And those people are gonna be even more likely to take action on the ad that you're, you're showing them.